Good. Uh, my name is Dan Safer. I am Industrial Technology Automation Robotics uh, Department Chair at Ivy Tech in Richmond. And in some of our English courses here at Ivy Tech, they're doing a writing prompt uh, for is automation bad? And you can go to videos like uh, CGP Gray's um, video about automation, talking about how automation is taking away jobs. You can do reporting and all this other stuff about the downsides of automation. But it's helpful to know kind of where automation is right now. And what this video is meant to do in, 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 in a few minutes is give it a basic rundown of automation. And, and we're here at Connorsville location. So this is one of our, our older facilities, but it, it still has the same basic ins and outs of what automation can do. Um, and one of the things that when people talk about robots and automation, everything automated is automated, but not everything is a robot. So for instance, so all robots are automated, but not all automa automation is robotics. Um, so there are things out there, so if you go to a baking company or, or a, a, a patrol, uh, an oil plant, that's automated, but that's through something called process control that's able to keep tanks level, but that's automation where sensors and things like that control levels and temperatures. Where most people freak out is they see something like this here. This is a robot out of a company called Yaskawa. Um, this is a Motoman robot. Um, actually, one of the big areas in the United States is over in Miamisburg, Ohio. Um, and this is what is common in industrial robotics: is you have something called a controller, which is a big thing with all the with with all the electrical components at that controls a manipulator and arm. Most arms have different types of end of arm tooling that allows it to do different things. This here is a gripper that can be pneumatically controlled, controlled by air, tied to controls through the robotic controller. Other thing, you may see robots that have welding attachments to it. You may see robots that have paint attachments or, or giant suction cups that can move material around. That's currently happening. But how this robot operates is use, using something called a teach pendant. This, looks like and very much is like a giant video game controller you have buttons this is a touch screen that i can touch touch to bring things up and even if you look at the programming you'll see lines of motion and how we we program and it probably isn't a good picture but you'll see literally move to this position in this way at this speed and how we move it to this position is we engage a dead man switch it out, with it being out, this is a safety switch. If it's out, it's saying, robot, someone can be around you. If I push it all the way in, it's saying, hey, robot, I'm being crushed. Stop what you're doing. But if I put it in the middle, that's saying, okay, robot, I'm safe to go. And you can see a little light that lights up on there that's saying that the servo motors are on. And all I have to do to move this is, is highlight one of its six axes and literally just move a button. I'm going to turn up faster so you can see it. And this is called jogging. How we teach robotic motions is we jog a robot to a position, and then we record in what position and what way it goes to. I have a simple program in place right now, and by pushing two buttons, I can let it go through that program. This took me five minutes to program a couple weeks ago. It's just a, uh, a simple motion program just to show off that what it can do, but it's literally just moving through lines of code on a screen and going where it needs to go. Right now it's doing a circle command, it's kind of doing an arch in a vertical location, but this is what most industrial automation does. And if you hear that sound there, that loud screeching sound, that's a sign that it needs oiling or greasing. This robot manipulator needs people to grease it. You can see right here, these, these are greasing ports. You need people to actually chain or to service like the gripper here. You need people to actually wire this thing up. Little do you know, there's a giant cord going into an electrical system in the back there. Meaning that we need some people that know how the electrical mechanicals operate so they can service them. So when we're going to an automated environment, when people say they're taking jobs, yes and no. They're taking low skill jobs, so the days of you pushing a button, putting it apart, and letting it go, that is probably moving away. But a whole subsection of jobs have been created because we need people that knows how to operate a teach pendant, knows how to service these things. When people say that jobs are being taken, 
that's a misnomer. Jobs are being created. If I walked into the hospital today, I wouldn't see just CNAs and doctors, right? I would see nurses, respiratory care techs, medical assistants, people that require some type of education. Well, in industry right now, there's a whole subsection of industrial maintenance or automation techs or automation, uh, automation assistants that can give you good living, but it takes a little bit of education to get there and a little bit of hard work because you can scan over here. This is an older style, but this is something called a PLC. This is a computer processor with input output cards. This is, we have smaller, better versions of this. Uh, out there today, this is something from the 1980s, but a lot of some industries still have this running around. But it requires people to know a little bit about computer programming. It requires people to know about electrical wiring, because if you don't wire this up right, things don't work. Hardwired buttons, wiring in. This is a job for people that will want to work with their hands. A lot of people say engineers are the way of the future. Well, engineers are coaches. We need players that will go out and work with their hands. The guys that used to do this got hired in in the 1980s or early 1970s and got trained on the job. Well, now we need people that have that same level of knowledge, but the only way to get that is through education because we're not going to be able to get you that 20 years of experience to know this stuff. And I have guys locally, making ex-felons ex making 27 an hour local companies because they've worked their way through things. So when people are saying that automation are taking jobs, that is not necessarily 100% true. It's actually creating a lot of jobs um, for people to make a good, honest wage. And right now, companies can't find people to do these things in industry. Um, and I was, we had a, a demonstration or a, 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 um, a workshop with local members of the Connors, Connorsville Common Council at our School of Technology. And I asked them point blank, what are some, what are some of the reasons why we're losing out on the jobs? It's because they can pull census data of tech college degrees, they can pull census data of degree completion, and see whether or not we have a trained enough workforce for people to come. And we're losing out on the jobs because we don't have enough welders. We don't have enough skilled trades people. Um, people like Mike Rowe from Dirty Jobs will highlight this time and time again. And one of the things that we're doing at Ivy Tech, especially in Connors Zone, Richmond, and including Muncie, um, uh, Marion, and Anderson, is we're training people for this new line of work. Most of the guys that come to our jobs actually have a job, but they need that skills training to move up. And so when people are talking about automation, it's not just robot or Will Smith iRobot or T100. It's these things that make our lives easier. And, and the way this, we still need people to service them, grease them, I jokingly say do robot sweats. No, they don't. So we need some way to cool joints. We need some way to keep them fluid. We need some way to service them when things go bad. And, there, and if we don't, things get pretty much destroyed. Um, and we need to integrate these among its surroundings too. So it's a good job, it's a good skilled job, but please do your research because some of the stuff out there isn't, is the cutting edge maybe in the future, but may not have a particular purpose. But this is what is out there now, and this is what's been taking place for the last 20 years. So thank you for your time. If you have any questions, you can email me at dstafer at ivytech.edu. Thanks.